so it's approaching where it's gonna get very cold for PA um, so I wanted to give a few tips for when you come flying in Pennsylvania one the major uh, with tablets tablets like don't like heat you know they overheat but they hate the cold the iPad or any tablet can be at a hundred percent by the time when you get out the car you can go in put the iPad on the chair inside of the plane close the door do your pre-flight walk around do your pre-flight and when you get back in turn the iPad on and it will be down to 10% if not 5% because of the cold that's how much they hit the cold if you have a battery pack you gotta make sure it's in the sleeve or the protective case that it came in because it keeps the battery pack warm so even if you have a, char a battery pack to charge the iPad with it's useless if you don't have that little warm bag that it comes in because it gets really cold in Pennsylvania not that it snows or there's ice but the freezing level does get pretty severe so that is another reason why you cannot rely on iPads for navigation you have to use the sources of navigation that's available to you in the plane also your pilotage and dead reckoning so the next thing is you're going to be using the heater more um, depending on what your airport has or airport uses uh, it may be a little bit different but for us we have that uh, a portable gas tank and a heater which blows hot air and you put that into the nose of the plane to heat up the engine otherwise it won't start it'll be too cold for it to start The next thing I wanted to say is when it gets extremely cold the planes don't go to full width like they normally do. You can put the mixture lever up all the way but it may not be warm enough for your plane to get maximum takeoff revs. So you got to keep an eye on that especially in the cold. Alright guys, I'm going to cut it short here and I'll see you later. Okay, so we got the iPad and we are going to do a little test. It's at 100%. Uh, it doesn't come up with a date. Oh, there it is. Oh, in the middle, October the 27th. So, don't do, try this at home. Oh, I'm sorry. We have an official test assistant, Muji. Pennsylvania is colder than a freezer. Hey Bixby, set a timer for 10 minutes. I'll start your timer for 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is, every minute I'm gonna check the iPad. It gets colder outside than what it does inside of the freezer. And it gets... Yeah. And... What I'm gonna do is every minute check the level of the battery. Because last year, 
What do you think, Moji? Because last year, every time I left the FBO, walked to the plane, put the iPad inside the plane, so it was at least plus one Celsius, I did my police flight. So I'm going to wait until it gets to eight. Starting the time of the sun. Because, yeah, I did the entire pre flight, just walked around the plane. And the battery. I'll get you water. Thank you for your help with this. Still a hundred it looks like. Alright, watch out Max. I pulled it to account for the time that I open and close the door. Because every time you open the door, it warms up a little bit. So maybe I'll just let the timer go to zero and then check it. Hi Duchess. I'm doing an experiment. It's a freezer experiment. Yeah. I'm seeing how long it takes for an iPad's battery from 100% to go down to zero. Check. Watch out. <clears throat> yeah, still the same. Alright. The freezer, the household freezer may not be cold enough. Cause it was a uh, I think it was during that snow bomb. And they were like 27C or something. But the point is, if the outside temperature was colder than the freezer, I'm sure the iPad can manage the freezer.
Sorry, I'm trying to hold this still. So about now, I would have walked into the FBO, walked upstairs, went to the flight room, gone downstairs, walked outside, walked to the plane, put the iPad and bag in the plane, did the light check, went back in the plane, retracted the flaps, or lowered the flaps, and then um, did my walk around, doing my walk around. It can take a good about 10-15 minutes to do a pre-flight, to do it properly. Again, the outside temperature during Pennsylvania winter and fall is colder than what it is inside of your household freezer. So if it can survive outside when it's lower than that, I know an iPad can survive the freezer. So no, this won't permanently damage the iPad. May not be good for it, but So if you were relying on this tablet to do your navigation, you've only just about finished the pre-flight. You're gonna climb back in. I'm talking to the people on the camera, on YouTube. One minute, 30 seconds to go. What are your opinions on it? Okay. You can sit on my shoulder. Or not. Thank you for your help though. One minute to go. Assistant Moji's coming back. He's looking at me like, what the heck are you doing? I was thinking about adding one more minute just to make up for the times I opened the door, but I don't think it was that long. Thank you. Alright, let's see what happens. Or oh, do you think the battery's lowered? 
Okay. Okay, so let's take a look. There's no picture. Okay, so the iPad is completely dead and there's condensation on the window. So let's get this thing out of the fridge. I'll let it dry off and plug it back in to charge back up. So there you go. Under 10 minutes, just in the freezer, the iPad is all basically useless. That's one reason, major reason, why you can't use electronic flight bags as a primary source of navigation. Situational awareness only. Remember kids, the only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down.